speed of sound. Steve, I know you, uh, like an insight to my, um, musical taste. And Always. That, but that's my favourite Coldplay track of all time. I just thought I'd, uh, just throw that in. Not a fan of clocks? Uh, no, I think I, uh, I overplayed uh, Parachutes a little bit and, uh, but, uh, so that's my favourite one. I like it. I'm, I'm afraid to say I'm a bit of a Philistine when it comes to Coldplay. That sounds the same as all the other ones. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to meet these boys one day. <laughs> yeah, and they're saying- I'll time to their face, I don't care. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Ricky Gervais. That little, uh, funny little Wurzel type voice over there is Stephen Merchant. And with us are producer Carl Pilkington. All right? All right. Whenever we say producer, of course, that is in inverted commas. Yeah. Done with the fingers. Well, he, uh, he didn't have it. I wanted to play some off my iPod today to record it because they didn't have it here. Uh, it's a great track called Anthony and the Johnsons. He didn't even have the lead. He went, right, it's difficult. And he, and he went, is it any good? I went, yeah, it's really good. He went, well, why haven't we got it here already then? Oh! Oh, that's the- yeah, that's the paradigm, is it? If x has got it, it's no good. Four non-blondes doing well, is it? That's still in the cupboard, is it? Unbelievable. We're a little bit annoyed today, aren't we, actually? I'm really annoyed. Yeah. All that stuff we did last week, um, uh, uh, that Landau sent us some sparkling wine, and we thought, right, we're- well, you shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. How many times did you mentioned it? I like twenty mentioned times. It about twenty times. We we uh, well, the finale was hitting Carl on the head with a cork. That's on the website, by the way. Okay. RickyGervais dot com. Go there and see Carl being hit in the head with a cork. Right. Yeah. We and we said, look, send us free stuff. We'll talk about it. Nothing. The 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 the. Cupboard I mean, literally is nothing. Empty. The cupboard is bare. No one has thought. I tell you what. There's the, there's there's those guys from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rick. We are taste makers. We're yeah. opinion formers, you and yeah. I. Yeah. And you know, you'd have thought if anyone was going to send us some free stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I, I it makes me fume. And well, you know what it is? It's well, because people, PR people and that, they've realised no one's listening. But not only are we going against all our principles and losing our dignity just for some free stuff. And integrity. And integrity, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going against excellent policy because obviously they would have got thousands of pounds for Landauer to be mentioned <laughs> last <laughs> well, week. On, 20 really. times. No, it wouldn't have. It's 40 it's quid. Right? Fem, right? <laughs> it's 40 quid. Yeah. For a, 40 quid for a nine minute advert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So advertise your quality stuff here. Yeah. Jeff's Garage. <laughs> Cheaper than some other garages. <laughs> uh, it, we do, we, uh, anyway, uh, uh, actually, if there is a- Did we play an advert once for a <laughs> tattoo parlor? Yes! Do you remember that? I'm sure yes! we played an advert for a <laughs> tattoo <laughs> parlor. <laughs> what, who can, what tattoo parlor can afford to advertise on a radio station? <laughs> Unless it's a tin pot one like this. Oh, God! Oh, I've got good, some good music today though, Steve. Oh, really? I hope so. I'll be the judge of that. Go yeah, on, well, what well, 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 ACDC. Oh! Got a bit of uh, bare skin. You need uh, colouring in. Come along to uh, Ron's bike shop and tattoo parlour. Here, right, Mum, on your hand, and give your Harley a tune up while you wait. I can't believe no one wants to advertise with us. And that only costs what twenty quid? Yeah. And they play that. I in mean, I turned down millions of pounds to do adverts because I think it's beneath me. I thought, and I thought last week I'll give it a little bit back. I'll give. I'll excite all these people who want to get it. They, Nothing. All I'm thinking is, Steve, either. We, our cash rate's gone down, no one wants us anymore, mm -hmm. right? Which is impossible, surely. I would have thought so. Or, we're on a tin pot station that no one listens to. Now- Ding! <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Correct answer. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'm having to hold on the pop shield of this mic because it keeps falling off. It's embarrassing. This it's whole awful. Room is embarrassing. I mean, uh, oh, God. Well, Carl, what, what are your thoughts? Why have you stuck it out here? Uh. Nothing better coming in on Well, That's I'll tell you right, why, because you're always on holiday. You don't do a lot. Oh. You get paid, you know, well, doesn't he, really? He's a moany. I don't I mean, he doesn't try and get on at all. He doesn't deal with people. He moans about everything. And, uh, you know, so he's. I'm alright. I've got my own little room and that. Yeah. Good. Like a cage. It is like a cage, yeah. isn't it? And he can shut the door, shut the door. If people walk past him, shut the door. He doesn't want him looking in. He's like a, he's like a miserable old chimp. Did you, we notice today how much he at is Simeon, isn't it's he? It's very strange, actually. Um, we maybe should try and get a picture on the website because Carl's arms are particularly chimp-like. <laughs> it's very, really very strange. Because he's got that sort of, he's got long downy hair. It's and not the like- long extended knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And his totally round face that sort of the chin goes back and the, uh, the dome of his cranium. I think, quite seriously, I, I know we sort of share about 98.5% of our genetic material with, um, uh, bonobos and chimpanzees, but I think he's got a little bit more. Yeah. I, I honestly think he's a little bit of a throwback. Just his line, they just kept to this sort of, really the ugliest one in the camp. 
cave yeah. and the tree and he really didn't he didn't come out of it. I'm not saying you are, you know, I don't think you'd- well you are, yeah you're chimp-like. No, it does- it does annoy me. Me air annoys me on me body and that. Cause <laughs> it, I've got- I've got like air on me- on me little toes and that. Have you? And on the legs. Uh, would you- like, see your little toes, can you pick things up with them? Oh, that's right. Okay. Well that's- that's- what? that's the finale of this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. gonna see if he can play a record and put the fader up- From a tyre. <laughs> while yeah, swinging, swinging on a tyre. Just using his toe- his hairy toes. Yeah. I've sort of got air all the way but then it just runs out where it should be. On the I know. Yeah. Top yeah. Just, and do you- is this part of the reason why you're always uncomfortable about, you know, being nude or around na naked people? Uh, is that part of the reason, do you think, because you look so grotesque? Well, when I'm on holiday I don't really like wandering about without a top on unless, like, it's a quiet beach or a whatever. Sure. There's so no, what would you normally no wear? Sure, I just have like a nice sort of light, summery, sort of linen shirt maybe, just yeah. a few top buttons open. Yeah. But I don't, I, yeah, I don't like, the naked body isn't that nice anyway, is it? You know what I mean? It, whatever it is, if you're a cat and you're shaved, you don't look that nice. <laughs> You know what I mean? But with I, mean, I think you'll it. find a cat is naked even with its fur on. A cats don't wear clothes. No, but what I mean is a, right. bald, a bald cat isn't that good. You know, you no. know it does me head in that I'm bald. I'm not, a, you know, I wish, if I could have hair it would be nice but that's like- Would you prefer it? animals to wear clothes like Mickey Mouse does? <laughs> <laughs> or Goofy? You know that I don't like nudists and all that, we've done it. But don't you think sometimes you could sort of like- Maybe, uh, um, I don't know, fancify a, a little bit. Like, um, if, if there was such a thing as a, an ape, um, salon, and there isn't, Carl, <laughs> there isn't, right, um, would you, would you, you know, give a, a orangutan a, ch a trim, maybe start with his hair, cause some of those look like they're going bald but they've got a they comb should, over, they don't should they? just have a shave. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like that. That's what I did. Just take it back. <laughs> and the underarms as well. Yeah, they, they've really got a lot of underarm hair. Um, even the women ones. Really? Yeah. That's disgusting. I know. I don't know. I don't even know why they breed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they get they laid some of those horrible old, uh, hairy ginger orangutans. <laughs> yeah, they are particularly grim, some of those. I know, yeah. The big ones. I know. Ginger yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be happy, can they? What is that? What, why is- where did that happen, the, the ginger thing? Why do people give them- like hard time and that. Well you just gave them a hard time then, so why did you do it? You no, were just flying in, were you, to people, a- people do sort of give- I, I don't- I don't understand why, but ginger people get quite a bit of stick and I, I've never understood it. No, I was doing it, it's just- I don't know why. I they don't do know. They do though, don't they? I don't know, it might be historical, it might have been because- I, I, I'm sure they don't everywhere in the world, I'm sure it's probably- No they are, they're always- I've, I've said to you about even like ginger cats are always fat cause they- they sort of sick of it probably. <laughs> Wait, 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 Ginger cats, what do you well, mean they're when you see a ginger they, cat? They've been eating like because yeah, they're upset, up they've been bullied You never see like a thin happy ginger cat running about, he's always overweight and looking a bit fed up. It's just a <laughs> good point, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously it was a good point, Carl, it's a point. So last week the Chinese don't age well, now anything ginger, including cats, yeah. No, I'm no, sick of it. No, but I'm just saying. Are I, you I don't ginger? Would you like to take issue with any of uh, Carl's points? <laughs> 83 XFM is the text. You can text us. Maybe you've got. Maybe you've seen a thin ginger I'm not, cat. I'm not having a go though. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's weird how, how people give him hard time. And it's uh, if I could have air, I'd go for ginger air rather than being bald. Really? Mm. <laughs> from Ben Folds on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Out of facts, mm -hmm. never mind champagne and freebies like that, forget that, we're not doing that anymore, it didn't work, okay? But we are still in demand. Got a fax here, right? Uh, so guy says I produce a program for the BAS scientists, right? Wintering in Antarctica. Now what this bloke is saying is, there are scientists, right? Um, researching in Antarctica and they're soon, they're already locked away and sort of like out of touch because they can't get to them, right? But they're soon going to be living in 24 hour darkness because through midsummer here, it's, it's darkness for 24 hours for like three months and Jeez. they're totally cut off and he's trying to get some stuff together and he wants us to record a message and it said, um, uh, every year, um, uh, they, they choose a celebrity to do something, a message, uh, uh of, uh, of their choice. They had Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, Jonathan Ross, 
this year, Ricky is the popular choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm up there with Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, and Jonathan Ross. In in terms of the vote amongst some scientists stuck in a hut <laughs> in Antarctica for three months, I so think they just they've just got cabin fever. So that's they've another gone. poll. So that's another poll I've won. <laughs> Uh, a British <laughs> Antarctic scientist in a hut pile. If I was trapped in a little room with <laughs> several other men for three months of pitch oh, darkness, I- Sexist. But, or, or indeed women. Yeah. I can't imagine why I'd ever want a message from Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> why would Rolf- I mean, like, David Amber, fascinating. Well, I Jonathan assume Ross it is the site. It's, it's the animal- that I, I assume they're researching penguins or something, aren't they? If they're stuck there. Or maybe- But what's that Seismic to do activity or maybe polar, uh, uh, shift, I don't know. Possibly if you were researching kangaroos. Yeah. Oh, well, he, know, he knows about all animals, doesn't he? You can take him a budgie with a broken wing and he'll sort it out. Or he knows a man who does. Sure. He can, you know, he'll, he'll sort that out for you. And they do a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while yeah. you wait. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, but anyway, I thought they want a five minute message. We can do better than that. Let's dedicate the whole show to them, Steve. We can what? Dedicate the whole show to them. What was it, trouble with my diction? A little bit. I'm just thinking again, you know, we've got to slow down because <laughs> these guys are there, they're, they're working, they're busy. They're used to, uh, like speaking eloquent yeah, <laughs> English. Yeah, exactly. They're used to talking to intelligent, yeah, educated people. Yeah. So Carl should be something of a surprise <laughs> to them. I imagine they'll just flood back early and come back to study him. <laughs> So, this is, uh, this, this show is dedicated to all you sci- I know nothing about them, I don't know how many there are, I know they're just, as I say, in a hut somewhere, presumably with a laptop, drinking, uh, hot chocolate out of steel mugs with- <laughs> Just looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not yeah. on the internet, are they? Oh, are they not? Well, no, there's no the phone laptop? line. Well, well how do they charge up the laptop the, when it runs out? Well, they've probably got generators. They must have other stuff. They've they, they got a telly in that, haven't they? Of course they have them. No, for DVDs and things. Well, they could probably, yeah, they could probably have a, uh, a DVD player that, that would run off a generator and stuff. So they can play, I don't know what we're giving this on, CD or something. Mm -hmm. But, oh. um... And what are they... What, how what, can that enhance your life, though? That you, uh, like, two months has gone, you've sat there, you, you, you're chewing, um, Kendall Mint Cake and, uh, uh and just looking round at white walls, right, thinking that the thing's gonna come in any minute and <laughs> yes. put you out of your misery, yeah. right, and you go, all right, lads, it's here, what? A five minute message from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who? The, uh, fellow from the office? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. I mean, so, yeah. I don't know how I can enhance. I mean, I, I go voted, into- One of them's going, I voted for Ricky Martin. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. But I don't understand, um, what they're researching. You say penguins, but that's just a hypothesis. Well, I'm assuming that, cause it's Antarctica. Where, where the, uh, the penguins live. Is there anything else there? What else is going on? Well, there's presumably climate differences and Well, yeah, because it's a, it's, it's a landmass, isn't it? Arctic's just on ice and Antarctica is actually a continent. It's a landmass, so there's stuff there. But presumably not in the winter. I imagine it's like ten foot of snow and really not a lot happening. Sure. I don't know what they're researching. They could be, it could be, uh, 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 astronomy, as I say, it could be some sort of seismic thing. It could be just testing polar melting. It could be, it could be penguins. I, I have no idea. I haven't got the information. Uh, I, I don't think they want us to go into what they're doing. <laughs> I they, they don't, already know, yeah. They probably want to know what's happening in the world for, oh. Well, we, we've got the man here. That's an interminable five minutes for them. They've already, we've already wasted <laughs> that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna put it on excited to hear from you, and they've just got five minutes of us discussing on, what though, they might be doing. What I'm worried about is this bit that well, for these for these ten people there, we've just annoyed the two hundred listeners we've got. <laughs> Because they're thinking, what's in this for me? <laughs> well, we'll have fun along the way, and what I think we're doing, they, they've been stuck there, as I say, they're out of touch, they don't know what's happening, so Carl Pilkington is the man, um, uh, we're gonna have a break, we'll have a song, maybe some ad breaks, and then Carl is gonna let these scientists who are stuck away in the darkness know what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Is that all right, Carl? Well, I, you know, I don't really follow the news, so oh, they will be play a record. I was gonna say, what's been going on? Okay. <laughs> 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 Embrace a glorious day. Well, it is a glorious day, Steve. Brilliant. Every day's a glorious day, isn't it? Well, it is when I'm with you. Yeah, love the world. Yeah. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilton's, by the way, XFM 104.9, um, et cetera. What's, what have they missed for the last, uh, just, just, just do the last few weeks. What have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers, they haven't got telly. What, what's the- look at him, he's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what, what do you understand? 
Think what what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on on the news and that. What's what's gone on in the world and that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, or just things you've done personally. I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. Pope's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, li I like it. Pope's dead. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they're listening in. Going, What's happened? Pope. The Pope's dead. <laughs> we don't say like that. Break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it, and it pa you panic a bit when it's the breaking news, and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go Pope's dead and you go, well. So you've just used that is. short, sharp tactic. Who, I said yeah. it softly, like though, didn't I? I, just said it, I just said it softly, no. Pope's dead. <laughs> mm. When you're all, you know all that coverage of the Pope, with like these millions of people that had gathered in, you know, in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about, you remember we talked about the Queen Mother, mm. and they were queuing up, queuing up, queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like the state. four hours and to get a glimpse. And once again, I couldn't help but feel if they popped him on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled him past <laughs> everyone else, <laughs> they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. You know, once again, people not thinking. They're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, like me. What, like students and ragweed exactly. with a, with a bed a, down Oxford Street? Those novelty beds. They're all dressed in kind of cardinal's gear. Yeah. Just, you know, trundling them off and down the, yes. Well, it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said they've now got a new pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being key. <laughs> <laughs> So, who have we offended? I I'm mean, not, it, 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 the thing is, it's like, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about guilty about offensive, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good but, that he can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if he can get away with it. Yeah, yeah, why couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why, <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, right. and we've, we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like Raffles, it. though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it, it, it's own people put, let's put this in context. You know, he's not, he's not a villain, but sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet- <laughs> It's not a witness re- uh, <laughs> <re -location laughs> protection scheme. <laughs> but because- because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth, like, the-, the, the like, corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the village? It's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you're meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, do you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now, has he? he? Stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good, alright, so with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> To them, they're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like this but little deli. We're not going back. There's a foot long spider on the loose. Are these people bright though? You, well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level you or two. They're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro yeah, they're, they're pro oh, Carl. This, I tell you, this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like a big dinner. Scientists there watching yeah. this, finding That's out what's going right. to go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little time. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else? What else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? 
<laughs> We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83 XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Uh, <laughs> get back to you. <laughs> uh, Pete in Tooting, now again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, uh, I've heard that. But sh I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. What and he's pro he was probably fed up and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> What did Which he presumably do? he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's what did he do? He, he stitched up. He stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for forty pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently, um, incidentally, the, if you'd like us to uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for forty pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch. Eighty three XFM. Uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but so that's so that's one one explanation. There's another one here, which is uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick because in El in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. And that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Eighty uh, three XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, uh, no, 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 there, no, there might be truth for both of those. I mean, the truth. The point is that if only those are true, they were already being picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, 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 maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some uh, uh, a little bit. So if off. he was bald, then old bald people would be like, "Yeah, get our time on that." Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, so t uh, play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? He eats chicken. <laughs> Pogues, rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope uh, I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. I'm right. you're, you're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor, electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter and so on, and so he's saying, uh, they do listen, they can't, they have the internet, so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet. And uh, if you get the chance, say hi to Francis and the rest of the winter is for me. Sure, no problem, yeah, thanks James. Um, but yeah, there they are, that's what they're doing, that's what they're up to. But, but why, why are they asking you for a message though when, I mean, have, have these people got families and that, or are they convicts or? <laughs> 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 no, which of course they got but they probably do get messages from their family. <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know, like, you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them, yeah. and they sort of look a bit fed up on that, is this message that you're doing for, for like, people who d don't get a letter in the post from- Brilliant. So they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves? Yes, sir, I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> you have got a message, Hargreaves. <laughs> I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Really, sir? <laughs> and I give it. Don't talk. <laughs> don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Yeah, what, what's annoying me is it, right? They, they're saying they're stuck over there for months, but it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah. They're well, I'm wrong. To, listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done. Go home. Well, that's so, well, then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play a record. Well, hang on, before that, here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We've just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? 
Uh, well, like I said, I don't, I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, not enough. No. But uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, it's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the uh, the EU Constitution and the uh, the no votes? What uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What what's the problem there? Oh, this this isn't this, no, is, better, this better, is, is a broadcasting now, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something. Well, the Talk. Fat, the fat baby then the fat baby that they found that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That uh. Uh, oh, for f I don't know what it's just a just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what was on the telly. It was on the telly. And but that, what was it. on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just they've found some. Uh, there's there's this illness called Momo, right? And uh, they've just got this. This woman had a kid. It's really sad. It was on Channel Four and that, right? And uh, kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo. It's called Momo. Isn't that yeah. that Black Music Award? No, no, right. Little little fat baby and that. And uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies, right? And uh, one so of them. They're in danger. How fat? Are you not telling what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone. It was. It was only two. And uh, th there's, there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, uh, endangered? Is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't <laughs> Are we worried? Is it like a conservation campaign? They're hunted for their flesh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just sad. <laughs> if you s I know. Uh, it's just you that, but, you, but, but if you've you seen it, you just go. It's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it, and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you there's three of them in the world. I, d I st uh, okay. What else is on telly? Uh, the, uh, something I watched the other night, that was good. Uh, again, you know I learn stuff from the, from the telly, I don't watch the news. Yeah, well you don't learn you stuff on the telly, yeah. yeah you, you, what, you told us there's a fat baby in the world. Forget about them there's in- There's a spider, in, in, a spider eats chickens and there was a fat kid, that's- Forget, alright, forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do, right? <laughs> Iceland! But, um, but what's her name? I'll tell you what is interesting, Steve. Well, um, I didn't know that much about it. O autism. Okay. Oh, good. It's just some more entertaining stuff on XFM 104.9. No, no. It's to cheer up people. Go on, and what? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. It, is? Uh, yeah, it scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated. And now we're going to touch on a really. I mean, no, I uh, said, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carvin. Tell me, tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there was this, it, again, Channel 4, coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> but what's the name? It was- It's the attention span that I like! <laughs> it's these, these people who, uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, they sort of take in a lot of information, they get sort of a bit, they get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who, uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He saw uh, the, the cameraman was saying to him, uh, so, you know, why, why EastEnders and that? And he said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the programme was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. Right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you can take it's him- It's Rain Man. No, I'm he not- He has special autistic powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we were, we were so for Rain Man. I, I don't know what to do. So I don't you know mean, what to so do. He'd be a but great there's other things. Sort of autistic Sorry. mastermind. He'd well, be what dynamite. I'm saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though, sort of, why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. Wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a- it is a disability. No. 
Yeah, well, I don't there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill-educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, they did, they seemed a bit- but You watched the program! What did you learn? That yeah. he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that but, other- that other little bit, yeah. But the main- the main bit of it was he can soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying he didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is I brilliant. This is just like uh, I, I. This is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. And no, I'm, I'm going to sit back it's now. It's I'm not going to even. I'm not going to defend you no, no. or explain anything. Just tell me. Go on and tell me about the other disabilities no, what, that are what, worse. What, no, what I mean is how people c can sometimes easily get mixed up. Um, how people are scared of like a cyclop. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, he's got a disability. A bloke with a bloke. Who's with scared of a cyclop? No, it's Apart just from Jason and his Argonauts. <laughs> where have you- where, where's this Cyclop that you're scared of? No, I'm just saying in history and in books and that- No, 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 not in history. Hi hi history happened. Yeah. But what are you thinking of? You're- you're mixing history with Greek mythology and Roman mythology and every other type of mythology. What do you mean? There wasn't really a giant Cyclop that went round picking up ships and throwing them around. That's not history, Carl. Do you think Batman's history? <sighs> <laughs> no, but this was- uh, it was ages ago, wasn't it, when we were sort of- No, I'm not from... saying it didn't happen ages ago, I'm saying it didn't happen! Well, he might have done. There's no- I mean, what's so ridiculous about a fellow with one eye? In the middle of his head! And he's big and scary and lives in a Why cave! Why is he scary? Cause he's got- what, if he had eight eyes, I'd be scared of him. <laughs> I'd only days I've got a dis- uh, oh, we'll talk about it in a bit. <laughs> Bobby Womack, across 110th Street, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Can I just remind people that- A man um, so stupid, it isn't actually offensive. Mm. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I just wanted to remind people that they can get in touch, uh, on the text, <laughs> 83XFM. You'll need that, uh, text number shortly, because we're going to be playing Rockbusters very soon. Um, Gav has texted it- texted in, and he says quite simply, What's happened to the webcam? All I can see is a bold monkey. <laughs> um, well, you're absolutely right, we'll try and get that sorted out for you. But, uh, we're rock- we're rockbustering now. Should we do it now? Should we do it now? Say it up now. Okay, great. Yeah. So so we'll just- you should just remind people, Rick, for, uh, particularly if they're trapped in Antarctica for the next well, three months, what this game is. Well, this is, um, uh, um, blockbusters, um, just totally ripped off and, um, the clues are bands and artists. Um, they- Carl says they're cryptic clues, they're not cryptic clues, they're more like what word am I thinking of. They're tenuous, um, some of them don't work at all. Mm. Um, so it's- it's really are you in tune with a shaved monkey? I mean, it's nearly embarrassing to get the clue. I pride myself on that I don't really get them. And I, I'm- I'm sort of proud of that. Cause you shouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I think I've given it a, a big sell. Yeah. Now, you do win tat today, but the big prize is going forward to be in the draw in, um, five weeks time, when there's a, a signed, uh, Homer that I uh, got Matt, uh, Graining to draw. If you go to rickygervais.com, you can see him drawing it. It's an original. Well, is uh, it, if they want to see it, they can go to xfm.co.uk slash ricky, and it's actually, just click on it, you can have a look at it. Oh, you can see all the pictures there, can't you? There's also a signed, um, Nigel Tufnell. Um, poster, uh, and, uh, us three as, um, flanimals. But there's a little, actually, video clip, uh, as on rickyjervais.com, oh, mm -hmm. you can actually see Matt Groening, um, uh, drawing it. Well, so those, those prizes are the ones that, the big prizes you can win in five weeks' time when you, if you get to the grand final. In the meantime, uh, it's the usual selection of mediocre gifts which will be given away. That we've found in a draw that people have sent us yeah, to give so away. Yes, so first up we've got, uh, the, um, I think J- well, I think most people agree, the mediocre John Travolta film Ladder 49, which I think right. barely made it into cinemas over here. No. Uh, we've also oh, got on DVD. And, that, what were you, and we're giving that away! <laughs> we're giving that away! Brilliant! On DVD, oh. uh, the TV series Grumpy Old Men, which I think is repeated every single night on BBC Two. Oh! And, uh, and, and, and that 
that's free as well, is it? Yeah, oh, that's free. Oh, well. okay. Well. Right. Uh, we've got the complete third series of Alias. Great gift. Um, only if you've seen the previous two seasons. So, um, is that the one I mean? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, French and Saunders at the movies, a collection mm. of all their hilarious movie mm. spoofs. Um, again on television, I think every Friday, and uh, the TV series Operation Good Guys. You know, fine series, but you could see that on UK Gold most nights. So, so um, once again, an excellent. But of if you win all those and take them straight down the record and tape exchange, you will be able to get two albums that you actually like. That's exactly right. So well, cut people send us them, so they sort of get bigged up on the radio. So that's done. We don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> about that. Yeah, angry. So, uh, anyway then, three, <laughs> three clues. Well, hang on, let's play the jingle. No, I haven't got one. Have you not got a jingle for Rockbusters? No. Well, do one quickly, no. Okay. Uh, uh, Rockbusters. Brilliant. Alright, so we've got, we got three of them. Uh, cryptic clue and the initials, the band, it could be a band or an artist, we've done all that, haven't we? Yeah. Alright, first one. Uh, the fella. Oh, for f- let his wife know how he got the bruise on his leg. Right? Give us that again. The fella let his wife know how he, how he got the bruise on the leg. He got a little bruise. Yeah, hey, it's, it's all, imagine it's that in the Times crossword. You read it again, it's slightly different. Every time I look back at this crossword, it's slightly different. All the words change. The it initials, can't be cryptic. The initials there, C-L. Right? C-L. Fella got a bruise on his leg. He let his wife know how he got it. What's going on? Right, <laughs> Yeah. All the muttering! And Se- what's the next, uh, second one. clue? <laughs> second one. That, uh, that Potter lad had, uh, a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards and that, right? He had a lot of bottle playing with the wizards and that. What's, what's all that about? <laughs> right? I love it! T- he always says, what's all that about? TB there. Band or artist, the initials TB. That Potter lad, he's got a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards, right? And the, uh, the third one, uh, the Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. Oh. What, what, what do they need, right? The mm. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. The initials TM. Right? 83936 is the text number. Um, we don't want to receive emails from this because we can't be bothered, so just a quick text. <laughs> Make sure you include, uh, all three answers. We're not interested unless you've only got- you need, you need to get all three. Yeah. But- but the winner may only get two, but oh, it's the fir- it's the first one with the most right answers. Yeah. Uh, and if you wins all those- all those DVDs. Hey, this is a box set, to be fair. That's pretty- that's a pretty good prize, that oh, one. Oh, you could probably get- you could get two- <laughs> two- two CDs when you take that down to record tape exchange. And about, you right? don't need to see the first two seasons because you won't know what's happening anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Um, I'm excited to think that there's, um, some people now in, uh, Antarctica just scrabbling around to get a pen. Yeah. Just trying to figure them out, you know, that- that'll keep- they'll- they'll probably, uh, stew on that for the next- <laughs> two months. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla Link, Gorillas, Gorillaz on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with the uh, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm-hmm. Carl, okay, we've got to sort this out. We didn't meet again this week, and this is a shoddy show. I thought we had a sort of framework for it, but um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I uh, thought be, you know Carl could sort of tell him what was going on. He doesn't know anything except watching telly, late night telly on s- strange channels. Like he gets all his information uh, about the news on Anna Nova, and I mean. I, I even tried out because um, Monkey News last week was awful. It wasn't Monkey I mean, News. It wasn't Monkey News. It was. I, I, I can't remember. On, it. I've been away on holiday. Brilliant. Yeah, and that m- Monkey News stops. Uh, um, I, I phoned him up that on there was a, there was a front cover um, of the I think it was the Telegraph one day this week, and um, it was an ironic story. It was a fluff piece, but it was a funny story. It was about a um, a monkey in a uh, in a zoo that had had a a. a a ruck with its father because it's adolescent. It was like the equivalent of like sixteen to eighteen, and it had a fight with its father, and it escaped. It ran away, and it was like you know an interesting story. Yeah. I phoned Carl up and said, "This is monkey news. Um, a monkey has escaped from its cage after an argument with its father." And he said, "What was the argument about?" <laughs> I mean, he thinks like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Amazing. What was the argument about? Like the zookeepers are going, oh, look, oh no, he's brought up his untidy room again. The father, oh look, he's caught him smoking again. Oh. I mean, what do you mean, what was the argument about? They have fights. They oh. have fights and then it ran away. His dad wanted him to go to college, but he just wants to quit and get a job. <laughs> yeah, and he, he fancied a monkey in the other cage. And the father was saying, she's not good enough for you. Mm. Oh. So what we've got was it about? News today? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of monkey news. You got a little bit of monkey news, right? Yeah. You've redeemed yourself right. then this we, week. We've got some stuff there and that. Uh, what else has been going on? You were, uh, what are we gonna talk about now? Sort of got, sort of head's gone now. 
your head's gone. Monkey news. Yeah. And, why uh, is your brain? Why is it? You f it seems like since we've come back on air, you have become dimmer. I mean, it is extraordinary. It's like it's like BSE has kicked or in. Or did you really we just are. forget? We just forgot. Maybe what? it's been a long time. We've forgotten just how stupid he is. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> proper. You mean it's, it's the silences? You know, yeah. he forgets we're on the radio. There's just I know dead it's, air. it's unbelievable, and oh. it's it's our name uh, on I this. Know. They put up a but oh, as I said before, you know, he is he is uh, 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 no offence. He's he's not a bright bright lad or educated or anything like that. Yeah, but but some things he says uh, does border on the retarded. I've been trying to take in too much information though, that's that's the problem recently. Well, I said to you last week, I've been like reading more books and what have you, and trying to take in too much, but the problem is, like even, even watching telly and that now, Suzanne said to me, you know, stop doing that, stop watching telly late at night and going to bed, because it's, it's making your brain too active. And I'm sort of- Heaven forbid. And I, you know, I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't, and then when I wake up, I'm th she, she had a go at me the other day, right? Because it was the night after watching the fat baby, right? Woke up in the morning, and uh, she had a go at me. Because as soon as I woke up, I said um, it was something like, "How can you freeze time?" <laughs> <laughs> and she says, "Are you going to say good morning or whatever?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to burst. Just imagine it, right? It's a, it's that the sun comes out through the window. Oh, she's like, right. Carl's like that, his little head. He, he, his eyes open, he goes, one of those floppy night hats. <laughs> he go, How can you freeze time? Oh, God. But it's because, like, whatever, the night before I might have heard that on the news or whatever, and it's just been sort of whizzing around my head. Sure. And, you know, <laughs> th it was a big debate. I think they found, <laughs> found, have they found a way of doing it or something? What are you and talking about? They've done something about freezing time and all that. Uh, the, see, this is the information. This is nothing. That is nothing, that. They've done some about freezing time. Imagine Jeremy Paxman coming on, going, well, the issues tonight said something about freezing time. <laughs> it's you're, you're uh, think before you talk. No, but I I don't worry about how to do it. I just think about what effects that. Oh, will have. they haven't asked you to get involved. Well, this is what Phew. I'm saying. No, you Phew. can't explain it. It's a it's a tough thing, isn't it? But what's the point in me worrying? It's not about a question. That? Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen any ghosts, full stop. There yeah. are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean, when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! <laughs> Hopefully someone will take care of me when Anthony and the Johnsons. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Interesting. Hope there's someone on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life because he saw on the website they do a, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. We'll check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. Could just sort of say, right. Um, How would they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website, so you, you're on the journey on the bus thinking, in about twenty minutes I'm gonna have a finger up my arm. But, they're doctors. Yeah, but just They're not doing it for a laugh, they're not filming it with a two-way screen, mm -hmm. they're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more, they're <coughs> up, oh, it's prostate's all right, out the, again, the, out the, again. I'm just saying in the day, the sort of- Do you think they're in the pub going, here he comes, it's Pilkington, I'll have my finger up his arse, <laughs> <laughs> Do what? they allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to of do that? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's, that's worse. Though. You're sound. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested in because you know. Do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse thing? Of, well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right. Do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, I, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport? 
you know, and you're a woman, they send in a woman person to search you. They don't, they don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? Yeah, I mean, they, they probably trust someone who's gone through, uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? There's doctors all the time coming out in the papers, oh, they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever, or, you know, it's all well, like, you're no, always hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is, the reason why they do that security, because there's, there's lots of security people and they can, you know, for your own, you know, for the, the, the you know, um, y your own modesty, there's a female one to search females and a male one to search males and that's fine. But th there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your arse and testicles? Do you want a bloke or it, you know, it, you, you accept got it. long fingernails? They don't have long fingers. What do you think this this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella Deville with a with a, with cleavage and long red false nails, going, "Hello, love, bend over. This may hurt a little bit." There, they, there's there's gloves and Vaseline. You, it, it, I mean, uh, this. I I don't believe well, there's two of you now in the room, Carl. They're doctors. They have to. They. Uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot. <laughs> about these dumb things that think us up in the glasses. You're a very well informed gentleman. What about this sort of thing? <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Yeah. Um, would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know, they catch it early, and that's it. They feel they feel up there. But if you want a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and have a feel around them. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, uh, if there's you know, if there's a doctor who can, I don't know, put me at ease. I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people, or something in the world, isn't there? Sixty billion or uh, something? Well, six billion. Something. Yes, you got it. Right. You hit it. Well done. Yeah, that's good work. Right. So yeah, this this six. What six billion did it say? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so if you you want to box the phone up <laughs> to assure you that the finger at the bum thing is not painful and that it's necessary and just that, that it's that not it's necessary. Really, it's just that it's not an easy way round. All right. What's you know the what phone number here? It's uh. I've changed, haven't I? Oh, for fuck. <laughs> oh, You're the producer! Hang on, here it is, here it is. 0871 222 1049, and I think you, you select option one. It tells you, anyway, what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP, <laughs> or, or if, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean, we, we want a qualified doctor, really. Anything else is not good enough for Carl Pilkington. Um, just to, to uh, we'd love to talk, you can ask him all the other questions, because you know, Carl, as I said last week, he, he, he doesn't, f um, feel his own testicles because he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him uh, how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well, I've got a very slight pain around the genital area at the moment and I'm not, I think it might be some kind of groin strain but I'm a little bit anxious, not entirely sure Yeah, what I it is, feel, so. I, I'm, I, 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 you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. And I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually- you, you, you're- I think you're in a pretty low risk area, aren't you? I'd hope so. You're coming out of the twenties. I think it's the- I think testicular sort of- I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. No. Uh, they, they told- well, all they said was to me, sort of like, it's twenties and fifties. Mine- So, like, we're in- <laughs> Mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's- like when you're relaxing or I was wearing <laughs> shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> What do you mean? Why? No, it, it was just a bit, sort of, a bit. I, I had shorts on all day. I'm happy and walking about on the beach, and what have you. Mm. And then at the night, when I put some long trousers on, I, I was sort of walking like well, a they, they probably like stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you when I was about 18, I was scared. <laughs> I, I, I went to uh, the doctor. I felt a pain, right? And uh, I was, because I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain. I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up to, through the urethra. Either. And uh, he went, <sighs> he said, Your jeans are too tight. They're squashing your balls. <laughs> so uh, we want a doctor like that. So what's the phone number again? It's uh, 0871. <laughs> Two 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 one zero four nine. A qualified. What, what do you mean the balls dropped though? We've got to come back to this. I don't know. They just felt like uh, it's not too bad at the moment. I was all right on the way in, but it's I, just I, felt, I feel twinges all the time. But you never know whether it's just, it's just because they're in. But they felt like they weren't my own. Do you know what I mean? It, they sort of felt a bit like these. Are there wasn't baggage. a bloke standing really close to you, was there? And no, you you just didn't get them mixed up. This is on the way back. <laughs> On the flight back. <laughs> Someone else has got. Well, do take a um, leaf out of nudist books. They just walk around. They've they no, got I'm nothing on it. About nudists. Why? Well, let's let's play this ad break and that. And Have you had another encounter? Mm, uh, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. Have you really? Oh. 
Right, we've got, uh, 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 who's that on the line? It's Rob. Rob, and, uh, are you a doctor? I'm a final year medical student. I'll be a doctor in two months, touch wood. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So, um, uh, wh where do you study? Do you want to give, uh, more details or do you want to remain anonymous I as you're calling in to- I study at Alright, great. So, um, why do, uh, GPs, uh, sometimes put, uh, their finger up, um, a man's anus? To see what's there. You know, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got an enlarged prostate, you know, it's either that or they stick up a big tube and have a look up with a light. What? And it's easier to do that. Now, are you, um, dumbing this down for us, or are you gonna foul your medical exams by saying stick up a big tube with a light? I I'm dumbing it down. Okay, come on then. We're all intelligent people here, uh, and Carl. So you can you tell us what- now what's that called? It's called a sigmoid escape. Right. Nice. That was and a clever test, wasn't it, Richard? 12 inch long. Yeah. 12 inch long tube. I can put up there. So, Carl, would you prefer that or a finger? Well, so do they, do they sort of do the finger first, and then, I mean, at, at what point do they say, hang on, we need a light here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's, it's normally if there's something wrong. But, so, so if I go then, say if I go to this well-man clinic, right, and yeah. uh, they go, yeah, the art's good and that, yeah, uh, finger, yeah. there you go, and then they go, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go and get me light and tube. I'd, I, you know, I could start worrying them because they've sort of found something. Yeah, they're, they're not likely to go straight in with the tube. They'll, they'll probably send you off some tests first. But Carl, there's nothing. Right. But you go to these places to, to, to put your mind at rest and to know where you are uh, with your health. I mean, it, it's not that you go along. That's, that's what most people worry about. They think that because I'll go along and they'll find something. Well, one, there's, that, that, that's, that's illogical. There's no, there's, it doesn't heighten the fact they find something because you go along. And two, if they do find something, it's a good job you went along. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I don't go to the doctor. But, uh, uh, you know, it. it, it I, I've had that oh, done. I've you had should be concerned if when they shine the little light in your ear, it comes out the other side of your ear. <laughs> no, the other ear comes right out the other side. That's but, when you should be worried. But Rob, right, you said then, if they, if they find something, they send me off for some tests. Why can't I just have the test without that and cut out the middleman? Do you know what I mean? Because you're wasting lots of money. There's hundreds of tests they could do, and they could do every test, and they could all come back with nothing, or they could do the finger up there and send you for the three tests you need to find out what's wrong with you. But in this day and age, with all the technology and that, and like brainy doctors and all that, the only way to find out is sticking a finger up there. What are you worried about, Carl? Is it fundamentally that uh, this doctor who's, uh, uh, um, has done six years medical training, yeah, is, is, is it embarrassing to have a man's finger up your ass? I just don't understand how you can get round to that without- But what don't you action. like? Is it fundamentally you don't like anything up your ass, or is it, uh, is it the fact that it's a man's finger well, up there? I, d I don't like going to the doctors, it makes me nervous, because I think if anyone searches you long enough they're gonna find a fault with you, right? <laughs> and especially if they're going that far into you, they're gonna find something, <laughs> and- Probably not. Well, you never- I, I just- I just don't- I, I don't know how to get round to that sort of- that point where you get a, what, what do you talk to the doctor about when he's like, alright, nice day, uh, strap your trousers. He goes, I'm just gonna, he says I'm gonna just, um, Maybe uh, it... people just shut up and let you do it and then breathe a sigh of relief when you say there's nothing there. Yeah. But I'm is that at the end of the test or is that the first thing he does? It's the last thing. So that trousers up out the door. Because he knows it ends conversation, he knows it's a bit of a faux pas, the, you know, the doctor says, oh I better not kick off with a finger up the arse, what I, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll start on with the, uh, you know, the head, and then we're down and go, oh, one final thing Mr. Pilkerton. Um, so, so Rob- He, dro he drops his keys and he goes, pick them up, and as you bend over- well, Will you be doing this Rob, is this what you're like open to do? Um, you do all I'll, these- I'll have to do it at some point. All doctors do it at some point, no matter what they're specialising. So the first one, is he another doctor there to sort of make sure you're <laughs> doing it right? Not, not dentists. <laughs> no, but do you know- do you Dentists know, aren't doctors anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? Like, normally it's like a, a co-pilot will have someone with him for the first one. So when yeah. you- when you put your first finger in- Yeah. Will someone be there going, right, you just want to move well, to the left I've, I've already done it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. See, that's the thing with a student, you're learning. So you get people teaching and, and you learn on these things. Can I just point out, uh, Rob, I, I think I'm right in assuming that, uh, uh, you have a glove on. Yep. And there's lubrication. Yep. And it doesn't hurt. No. There you go. 
What are you worried about, Carl? Who's this person who, who everyone's testing on in your class? <laughs> it's not one person. It's one person. There's like when a patient comes in and they've got a problem, <laughs> your your boss, the like consultant, he does his finger up and if yeah, he finds something, he goes to the patient. Is it all right if the student has a feel as well? Then well, he puts on a glove, puts the leave on the glove, and sticks his finger up and sees what he comes out with. <laughs> uh, Rob, I wish you could see Carl's face. I mean, uh, he just, uh, his face when you said, and he goes, says, uh, can this fellow have a go as well? He looked horrified that it was, a, he thought it was a free-for-all, like there's a queue of people trying on gloves and going, let's have a go. That looks good up there. What have you found? No, I mean, how come you had to sort of, is it not something you could test on yourself rather than waiting for other people to come in? <laughs> because then you know, because you're in an awkward position to get to, really. <laughs> Well, oh, but you can have a good rummage then without feeling too awkward, but to, f to sort of have a go on, on your first patient when you don't really know what you're looking for anyway, do you know what I mean? Never really thought about it. Because you don't, if, if you've never done it before, you pop your finger in there and you've got to sort of look, you've got to have an expression on your face like you know what, you, what you're finding. Well, they can't see what you look, they can't see I mean, your face. There. You've got the, the big boss consultant man going, um, now move your finger there and you'll probably feel this, because he's just done it, he knows what's there. Well, what, what, oh, so you're, he's already had a go, he's yeah. had a feel, and he's going, right, if you feel to the right, that's the conglomerary yeah. or whatever. Mm, the conglomerary, yeah. The, his conglomerary is in perfect right, working well, order. Uh, well, that's, I'm still Thank you, Rob, thank you. I'm sorry you had to go, to go through this. Um, Carl is probably the worst patient you'll ever encounter in your medical career. Good luck mm. with your finals, and, uh, and thanks very much. And, uh, do you know any female doctors who do this? Or? Thank you, XFM 104.9. Thank you. It's the night time on XFM 104.9, uh, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington, um, and, uh, what we, what, is, is it time? Is I it think, time? I think so. Yeah? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! Right then, so, uh, there's this monkey, right? Right. In Canada, it's in a zoo in, uh, Toronto, I think it is. Mm. Um, his name's Pascal. Right, and uh, what happened was all the, the people in the zoo uh, sort of said, you know, what can we do? Uh, sort of spice the day up a bit. Right? Yeah. So they left. Embellishing. Uh, no way, this is a new let story. Him do the news, let him yeah. do the news. Okay. So they they left. any dates? Just uh, let him read the news. Well, right? they, I, 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 interrupt Moira Stewart. It was about two weeks ago. <laughs> no, because she always says today, <laughs> so you know it's news. She doesn't say. Right, there was a monkey, right? right. Well, in then, Canada, on, right? Just finished okay. the monkey, you're all right. couple of weeks ago, in this zoo in Canada. Right. Um, Jesus. They got a camcorder. Right. And they said, let's, let's leave it for the, uh, for the monkey to have a, a play with, right? So, um, anyway, they, they passed w it around. Won a BAFTA. And a couple of chimps and that were rubbish at it. They were like filming the floor and all that, and the fingers were always in shot and stuff like that, right? But anyway, there was one, this, this one chimp called Pascal, right? Who, uh... Annoys me that he calls them monkeys, though. They're was, not monkeys, they're apes. He, was a, he was a dab hand at it, right? He was, like, <laughs> uh, filming stuff, really good shots, you know, sort of nice mood and that. He used the lighting properly and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, he didn't! Just let- this is the news, what are you talking about? This is the news! <laughs> oh, God, so Steve, anyway. it's so annoying. You know it annoys me so much. <laughs> Things like that. He was a dab hand at it. He was doing really good shots. It really annoys me. Let's Any, hear the anyway, news. Anyway, anyway, right, so he started, uh... At night, like when the zookeepers went home, he started filming like other monkeys on on the go, like, like whilst they were at it, right? And he was filming them and what have you. <coughs> the Ron Jeremy of I the love zoo. It. You yeah. know it's gonna end up on the web. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the zookeepers came in the next day, and it's like, let's see what shots he's got. Anyway, he's got all this like, you know, all these monkeys at it and what have you. So, oh, um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, honestly, so, <coughs> you so, don't know what this is doing to me, Steve. So Can I stop it now? So they thought, like, uh, actually there's a few monkeys who, who aren't at it enough, do you know what I mean? They have problems or what have you, so let's give them the videos. That is so it. untrue! This is so untrue! So, it's so untrue that it was filmed by a monkey! So it's so untrue! Then, right? Rick, I don't know so, who to believe. <laughs> 
Oh God! You're talking so much shit again. So you must know that's not true. There's so no way. There's a load of tapes out. Look at me. Honest. Look at me. Don't keep talking. Look at me. Yeah. You must know that's not true. Can it's we just you. hear, hear the you, end of this? It's all you. You had a go at me last week because I didn't have the full story. I've got the full story. You're still not happy. There is no way mm. that b by chance one all this. Oh, what should we do? Let's give him a camcorder. That could happen. Right. He then films him at it. That might happen. It might happen, but I don't think he'd keep the camera still. Uh, 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 two, they go. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is good shit. This porn's good shit. Anyway, Look at so that. he's got a lovely shot. Yeah, yeah. So oh, this got, is ridiculous. So let, uh, let me just recap because I, I lost my way there. So the monkey has filmed the the monkey porn, yeah. and now he's they're showing it to the other monkeys. Is he like directing? Can you hear him just, saying stuff? Like Can you go? It's like, just like you know, chimp pimp one, two, and three, and all the rest of it, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so they've got all these other tapes um, because what happened was. Um, they said he's quite good at this. Oh, and, and the animals, God! And the animals are, uh, happy having him around because he's not a human, he's just one of the gang, do you sure. know what I mean? So they started putting him in with other things like, you know, ostriches. Right. Uh, <laughs> and talking shit. I, I it was- I So, and do you know they have a problem with pandas in- in Japan? Yep. So they've- they've sent him out there, filming, uh, filming a bit of- where are you going? It's, you, you, honestly, you- you- you really annoy me. There's Come no on, way this like, is happening. Can we it's just hear the end? Why can't he just find a real story about a a a, a, a monkey? Let's hear I mean, the, end. the end. The end is he's really that he's, he's going to China. He's, he's filming the pandas and what. No, he's it. not. They wouldn't send a so, monkey director. Uh, they would not it's send a pointless. monkey director. It's it's Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen, possibly. The greatest rock song of all time, I don't know. Oh. Big words. Big words indeed, but I, I, I echo them. Um, well, we've run out of time, we've got to get on with, uh, um, with the show, it's, uh, near the end. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope the scientists stuck in a big, I don't know, hut in the middle of nowhere in pitch darkness, ten of them, um, Oh, I imagine enjoyed. they've been fascinated, Rick, by the finger up the arse discussion, we had- Chinese don't age well, gingers, Pope. yeah, gingers, all that, um- the big fat kid. Well, actually, th th they're- they're probably securing the knowledge that if they want to kill some time and it's dark, there's nothing better than stick your finger up someone else's yes, ass. Exactly. So uh, enjoy that. But oh, uh, they, uh, they've been hanging on for rockbusters clues, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Here's the answer. So uh, give us the clue again quickly. All right. So the first one was uh, the fella let his wife know how he uh, got the bruise on his legs. Go on. Right. That was that was uh, Courtney Love. Yeah. Court Court Courtney Love. So that's Courtney Love. So uh, that's, that's, that's the first one. C L. So that one's fine. Uh, the second one. Uh, that puffer. Oh, what, what am I doing? Letting that one just go? Just let it go, just let it go. Am I just letting yeah. that go? Oh, <laughs> annoyingly, we haven't got time to take issue with that, it. Uh, okay. That potter lad, he, uh, he's got a lot of bottle, hasn't he? Doing all that stuff with the wizards and that. Go on. That's, uh, Brave Harry. Yeah, the Bravery. Bravery, current sort of XFM band, the Bravery. Brave Harry, that works as well. No, it doesn't. And the last one. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work. The Buddhists. It doesn't work. Won't be able to get in their temple without doesn't these. Doesn't work. Brave Harry. Brave Harry. Uh, doesn't uh, work. Brave Harry. The Brave Buddhists. Harry. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these TM. Yeah. That's the monk keys, right? So who got all, who got all them? Uh, the monk keys. Who got who got all them? Right. The, which band are called the monk keys? The monkeys. Oh, the monkeys. Yeah, the monkeys. Right. So uh, who's who's the winner this week? The winner this week is Gina. Well, I'm, we're letting that go. Yeah. Gina got them all right. Uh, I think her text said she was from Horrorstead. I don't know. I've never heard of that place, but uh, I assume that's right. But Gina, you win that selection. I can't text. believe she got them. I cannot believe she got them. But she goes uh, wins those and also goes into the the prize draw. And we'll have um, six people competing for that uh, original Matt Groening thing. If you go to RickyGervais.com, you can see Matt actually doing that. We've got a signed Nigel Tufnell and uh, um, original drawing of us as Flanimals. Um, what I say, xfm.co.uk slash ricky. If you yeah. Want to have a look at the picture. And, and uh, well that's it. It's, it's three right. o'clock. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. More drivel next time. A shaven monkey. Right. XFM.